all right so in this video we will see how to build a 5.8 gigahertz helical antenna and as you can see that i have already built one and i have another jig for a 7 ton helical antenna which i'm about to build so in my previous video where i was testing the gps rescue with the ready-made rc gps plus compass after about two and a half to three kilometers i noticed that the vtx signal was uh, not that great even though i had a 5.8 gigahertz patch antenna but the circular polarized antenna that i have are not that great and then i was actually planning to buy a good circular polarized antenna but after a bit of research i found out that if you want to go long range then the helical antennas are a very good option so then i decided to print the jig and the former to wind the wire and if you want you can build a 5 turn 7 turn 10 turn or 16 turn helical antenna it depends on what you're looking for so if you want extreme range then you can increase the number of turns but if you want a wider beam width then uh, i think five turn is the best option i've decided to go with the seven turn so let's take a look at all the material that you would need so if you visit thingiverse.com and if you search for 5.8 gigahertz helical antenna you will find that there are a lot of models available to uh, print a former and a jig but the one i decided to go with has been tested by falcon rad fpv and i have linked his video in the description so i would strongly suggest that you watch a couple of videos and then get a good understanding of how the process is and then you can decide how many turns or which jig you want to use the 3d files for the jig and the former that i'm using are also in the description so if you want you can use this module as well the next you will need a copper wire now the one that i'm using has a diameter of 1.5 millimeters and i think that's about 16 gauge if i'm not wrong because i bought this from a local metal shop and the shopkeeper said that this is a 16 gauge copper wire so i decided to buy this the next you will need this copper clad plate or copper circuit board and you can buy this from any electronic store or a website that has all the electronic stuff and there are two options to choose from the one that i have has copper plating on both the sides whereas if you want you can also buy a copper clad which has the copper surface on just one side and this will be used as a reflector underneath the jig so you can see that i've already cut the reflector and i asked a construction worker to help me out with cutting the PCB board in a circular shape and he did that for me next you will need a coax cable and if you are building just one antenna then I would suggest you buy uh, two of these whereas if you are building two then buy four because when you want to install the antenna onto your coggle you will most likely have to use another coax cable to use it as an extension so that way the installation is a bit uh, easier and neat and the best would be to use the rg402 coax cable which is a bit thicker in fact a lot thicker than what i have with me and it can bend and retain its position for a good duration of time but since i couldn't find the rg402 coax cable i decided to buy the rg16 instead and that's the one i have also if you have a few spare uh, stock antennas like the one i have over here you can use this as well so you can cut the top half of the plastic part and expose the coax cable and then use that so that way you can even rotate the antenna and angle it if you want but that's just my idea and if you want you can decide to implement that and then there's something called as a wave trap which is uh, basically a piece of rectangle metal surface that we will solder to the very first uh, turn off the copper wire and you can see that over here and that's basically to lower the SWR or in basic terms it means it's there to increase the efficiency of the antenna so for the wave trap I've used this uh, aluminium strip and I've cut a portion of it in the required measurement and I sourced this from my computer cabinet you can use a piece of steel as well or cut the copper clad plate and use that the best would be to use a piece of steel or copper plate the thinner the better 
but don't skip the wave trap because this will definitely help you to get your SWR reading on the lower side and hopefully the antenna will have uh, somewhat a better efficiency than without using a wave trap that's pretty much what I know about uh, the wave trap and its use and then a sharp tool to uh, drill a hole on the reflector if you have a drill machine then you can use that otherwise you can use uh, anything that's sharp like this protractor or or a screwdriver with a pointed bit and then of course you will need some solder and a soldering iron and a tweezer some flux and then a plier and a wire cutter to cut the copper wire and the coax cable and then a heat shrink to cover up the coax cable and a glue gun or hot glue to secure the reflector to the jig and also to add some strength to the parts where there might be some stress so then let's start building the antenna so firstly make sure to straighten up the copper wire and make sure that you don't have any bends or uh, any cuts on the wire then grab your former or the molding part now one very important thing to note is uh, when you decide to print the former make sure that you are printing the right one because you have to follow the polarity so, so i'm building a right hand uh, helical antenna and the curves on the former are spiraled in the downwards direction whereas if i was building a left hand uh, helical antenna the curves would be in the opposite direction so i'll place the wire on the very first slot now mine doesn't have a hole where i would insert the copper wire to get a better grip but i think that's fine if you don't have it so you have to push firmly on the copper wire as you're winding it on the former so that it's uh, flush with the slots and the curls are neat and properly spaced between one another so the former that i have is uh, for the five ton helical antenna but you can make n number of turns uh, with the former so it doesn't really have to be a seven ton former or a ten ton former if i twist the former in anti-clockwise direction i can oh. then i can build more tones and then i can just cut this oh, somewhere here now make sure that you don't press or apply pressure on the coils before you install it on the jig otherwise uh, you could mess up the performance of the antenna now this is the part where you might have some trouble because i mean if you're using a lower gauge copper wire then then obviously the wire has to uh, go through the holes on the jig but since i'm using a 16 gauge wire the holes on the jig that i'm using are two millimeters in diameter and the wire is 1.5 millimeters so it does go through the hole but as i move down i have to push on it a bit harder to to get it all the way on the bottom to make this process a bit easier you can bend the beginning of the wire slightly so that it can enter the holes a bit easier so i'm having a bit of trouble trying to feed the copper wire through the holes so i'll try to just make the holes slightly uh, bigger so i've caught it through the first hole and the key here to install this easily and without deforming the coils is to get a grip on the bottom part or the very first few coils and then uh, gently press and give give that a turn so it enters the hole and starts to curl down so don't try to install the wire by holding anywhere over here because it's easy to bend or deform the shape so as you get closer to the bottom it's going to get difficult to uh, get the wire going through the holes because then there's more friction from all the points 
so it was quite a bit of workout for my fingers so now we get to the last hole where uh, if you want you can install the wire through the last hole and, and then bend the wire slightly so that it's parallel to the reflector but since i'll be using the wave trap over here there isn't much space over here and that's why it's best to cut the last hole and that way it's easier to install the wave trap so you can use a wire cutter or anything that you uh, think of is best to cut the part around the last hole and the reason i've left a few turns extra is so that i can push the coil all the way to this section and then bend the coil uh, uh, parallel to the reflector and now it's time to uh, solder the wave trap and also to get the alignment of the hole for the coax cable so i've marked the point with a pencil and now it's time to drill the hole now if you have a drilling machine you can use that but since i don't have a drill with me i used this protractor and i was able to make the hole on the first one so all right so i've made the hole and it took me about 20 minutes to uh, use a protractor and apply some pressure and then use a screwdriver like uh, this one and then uh, right and then hammer it so in the way i also ended up uh, scratching the surface and this is how it will be so now i have to uh, install the coax cable So this is the ground part which you will have to solder to the reflector but on the bottom side if you have a single sided copper clad plate then you will have to solder the ground on the top and the signal wire will be extended uh, at about 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters and that's where you'll solder the copper wire on the jig but that's why i would recommend you use a double sided a copper clad or a reflector so this is the ground part and this is the signal wire if you want you can use multiple heat shrinks just to uh, make the coax cable a bit sturdy so i've covered the coax cable with a heat shrink and now i can solder this to the reflector So first I'll apply some flux to the base of the reflector. So the ground has been soldered to the base of the reflector and now it's time to solder the signal wire to the copper wire but before i do that i'll solder the wave trap so i'll turn the antenna wire a little bit of flux to apply the solder easily all right so here's my wave trap and i've cut it to the best i could so the dimension for the wave trap is supposed to be uh, 3.2 millimeters by 6.5 millimeters and the exact place where you want to solder the wave trap is supposed to be uh, 3.2 millimeters away from the signal point or the tip where we will solder the signal wire of the coax cable So it was getting a bit difficult to 
sort of the wave trap on camera so I did it off camera and now it's time to sort of the coax cable Now what I've done is I've used my soldering iron and I've cut some part over here so that the copper wire can can be bent slightly upwards so that the wave trap does not touch the reflector because if you look closely my wave trap is at an angle and when I placed it on the reflector the entire antenna was resting on the a wave trap so I had to move that slightly upwards so now that I've already turned the signal wire now it's time to secure the reflector and the jig so to stick the jig to the reflector I'm using this uh, adhesive glue And now I'll make sure that I align the copper wire to the signal wire and then place it on the reflector. So now that I've glued the jig to the reflector, I can solder the signal wire to the antenna wire. Now at this stage it's best if you have someone to uh, hold the antenna for you or use a pair of helping hands. And now I'll solder the signal wire to the main antenna wire. And until the adhesive dries completely, I can use this clippers to secure the uh, jig to the reflector. And I'll also apply some hot glue on the bottom side of the reflector where we have soldered the ground cable. And then finally I'll have to cut this to about 7 turns. If I consider the turns from the start of the copper wire, then it will be somewhere around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'll have to cut the wire somewhere over here. But instead I have decided to cut the wire over here. And that's pretty much how you can make a 5.8 gigahertz helical antenna. Now obviously since I've built this, I'll have to test this and see how it performs. So once I get to test this, I'll share the results and let you guys know. Now before I end this video, let me just show you how I have decided to mount this on my Skies and Cobra X. So as you can see that I have used an extra coaxial cable so that uh, it's easier to secure the antenna to the video module and to secure the antenna to the goggles I have used a piece of velcro adhesive and the antenna is actually quite secure so I don't have to worry about the antenna falling apart when I'm actually flying and now the final step
So this is how you can make uh, 5.8 gigahertz helical antenna. If you found this video helpful, you can like it and subscribe to my channel. And like I said before, uh, check out the links in the description. I have linked a video from Falcon Rad FPV because I think he has the best uh, video on how to build a helical antenna for 5.8 gigahertz. Plus he also has a lot of great content on long range FPV. So, so there's a lot to learn from his channel. In fact, the best GPS rescue settings are also demonstrated by him and it actually turned out to be true when I tested in my previous video. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos.